My admiration for General Marshall as a soldier and a statesman grows deeper with each passing year. He truly was one of the greatest Americans who ever lived. George Marshall, as you have heard, did not crave power or glory. They meant nothing to him. He knew, as a great student of history, that the price of power and glory too often is paid for in human lives, the lives of young people. General Marshall never confused honor with pride. Honor for George C. Marshall was that quiet thing at the very core of his being that he lived by every single day of his life. We have so much still to learn from General Marshall, from his character, from his courage, his compassion, and his commitment to our nation and his commitment to all humankind. George Marshall is one of my personal heroes for many reasons beyond his inability to retire. His portrait hangs behind my desk in the Pentagon. And when I speak to students at our war colleges and the military academies, I invoke him as an example of the kind of leader everyone should aspire to be. The apotheosis of unshakable loyalty combined with the courage and the integrity to tell superiors things they didn't always want to hear. From General Black Jack Pershing to President Franklin D. Roosevelt. I think a lot about uh, George Marshall. I have uh, an extraordinary sense of uh, the character and integrity, uh, the commitment to service that led him to uh, perform so admirably on behalf of our country during some of the most challenging times that we have ever faced. Leading our nation in war as a general, in peace as Secretary of State, and later as Defense Secretary, uh, he was, they say, the only man, according to President Truman, who could get along with Franklin Roosevelt, the Congress, Winston Churchill, the Navy, and the Joint Chiefs of Staff. And he did so while never avoiding the hard issues, while always sharing his best advice, speaking his mind. I greatly admire George Marshall for his ability to solve incredibly complex problems by drawing on all sources of our national strength, a leadership trait as important today as it's ever been before. One of America's soldier statements, Marshall served our nation during one of history's most challenging periods. He proved to be a leader ahead of his times. He successfully prepared himself and others for a war which few foresaw at the time. And afterward, when history would dictate an isolationist retreat, he developed and implemented a comprehensive plan for European reconstruction and development. And the third category is uh, the transformational leader. That's the person that has that whatever it might be, on top of those fundamental leadership skills that are able to coalesce people around a vision, a common set of goals to inspire them, to, to uh, get them to, to go on a, a common journey together. And I think uh, that's a very rare thing, and I think Marshall had an extraordinarily keen eye for it, and that's why he was able to see the Eisenhowers and the uh, other, uh, the Bradleys and the, the people that he put in charge of the war. In a war unparalleled in magnitude and horror, millions of Americans gave their country outstanding service. General of the Army, George C. Marshall, gave it victory. There are few men whose qualities of mind and character have impressed me so deeply as those of General Marshall. He is a great American, but he is far more than that. In war, he was as wise and understanding in counsel.
C. Marshall Foundation. The Foundation's impressive museum and library and its wonderful educational programs ensure that the Marshall legacy lives on to inspire new generations of leaders.